<clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, at first, I'd like to offer the apology of uh, our tax partner, Shazen, who was supposed to come in today and do the speech. Unfortunately, he's fallen sick, so I volunteered to do the speech, so please bear with me. Um, our conversation is going to be about the research and development tax incentives that HMRC are offering to, to businesses. I'll uh, we'll start with a quick introduction about Haynes Watts. We are, uh, we've been founded since 1935. We're a top 15 accountancy firm. We've got over 60 locations spread out around <coughs> the country. The model of it is each office is independent locally within the region it serves, but works within the framework of the Haynes Watts. So we've got a head office that works on assisting the other offices taking headaches like telephone bills and contracts and the sort of agreements out of place, but then each office is a locality so we can give a sort of a quick service. <coughs> okay. The government, this has been started by Gordon Brown, I'm sure everybody remembers who he is. And it was mainly R&D started as an incentive for research and development, mainly with medical and pharmaceutical companies, and that was offered. In 2010, this has been adjusted to be offered to the rest of the companies, mainly SME companies. And it's, it's a company tax relief that can either reduce a company's tax bill or for some more uh, small or medium businesses provide a cash sum, and it is dependent on the company's expenditure or not. It's only available to companies, so if it's a limited company, uh, it's over available. For SMEs, it's 230% tax relief for qualifying expenditures. SME is defined as companies with turnover of up to 100 million euros up to 500 employees or 86 million euros of assets. So basically that covers about 85, 90% of companies in Leicester and Leicestershire. Just to know that there are 42,000 companies in Leicestershire. Out of those, there are 38,000 companies that are bracketed in the SME bracket. If a company is loss making, then you can claim a repayable amount of 14.5% of the enhanced R&D expenditure, which means if a company comes in and within the R&D expenditure, it falls, the tax bracket can be reduced from a profit to a loss. You can submit that surrender that to HMRC in return for 14.5% cash payment. I'll come back to this in a minute. So in summary, when a project seeks to achieve an advancement in science or technology through the resolution of scientific or technological uncertainty, that scares a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But what it does mean is if you're working to improve or to enhance a knowledge or an existing process or an existing product in a way that's not available readily in the market, that can be considered as a According to HMRC guidelines, science is a systematic study of the nature and behavior of the physical and material universe. So if I just wanted to understand how this hammer works, that can be considered as your understanding of the material universe. It's not just uh, going in and invent something from scratch. <coughs> What is an advance of science? So this is an explanation to it. An advance in overall knowledge or capability is a tangible consequence, which means an appreciation or an advanced knowledge. So if this table is done in available in this manner, but I wanted the table to achieve being able to reduce the size, increase the size of it, in the same manner and still fit in the same way, that could be considered as an R&D research work. What is uncertainty? When knowledge of whether something is sufficiently or scientifically possible or technologically feasible or how to achieve it in a practical 
in a manner that's not readily available. So anything that is available in the market, but you need to take it to the second stage, and your knowledge is not available. For example, a competitor might be doing the same thing, but he doesn't make that information readily to the market, and you have to research to know how to do the same thing, that can also be considered as r &D. So, again, and there are two types of activities that can be reclaimed for r &D. These that are directly to achieve an advancement, those that are indirectly uh, involved to achieve an advancement. Examples. So, you can look at scientific or technological planning, design, testing, or analysis, designing or adapting software, material, or equipment. So indirect activities can be IT services, supporting services, maintenance, security, or other stuff like paying stuff, leasing labs, and these are all to be undertaken as part of your r and research. R&D can also apply to a variety of industries, but the main ones we work with are engineering, manufacturing, logistics, food and drink, construction, textiles, and the IT industry. For example, if you look at a manufacturing business, we could be incorporating or coming up with a new or unproven manufacturing process. So for example, to manufacture a chair, you could have taken 40 steps, and now you want to do it but doing it in 20 steps. So that can be taken as R&D work. Modifying a new product or a process. So if you have a product where this chair was serving one purpose, but you make it into a multi-purpose, that can be considered as R&D work. Improved process, which is process efficiency, safety, waste reduction, can be also useful. Scaling a process. So a process can be doing more than one thing. Integration of new technology with all systems, which is basically automation. So if you're doing a certain process by hand that you have been able to automate that process, that can also be considered as well. The last bit I'll talk about quickly is the qualifying expenditure. So there are certain elements that go into the R&D cost of staff, which is basically your payroll. We look at the payroll and then the percentage each staff has contributed of his time towards R&D. Software cost, consumables, which is basically whatever you have bought as cost to make something, but then part of it has gone as either waste or for experimentation to do something. Cost of the work done by subcontractors and then the cost of clinical or trial volunteers. But this is for the medical and pharmaceutical industries. To be eligible, expenditure must be revenue in nature and paid at the time of the R&D claims accepted, which means it's basically for the financial year of the company. The R&D can go back to two years in time, but usually it's every single year. The last bit I'll talk about is how does the process work? So the process works, we come in, we look at the company, we look at the work that you are doing, we look at a sample of the projects that have been done, we look at the expenditure that have been done. From that, a draft report is put through to the company where they approve it, and then it's submitted to HMRC to claim back the R&D. 